Hitler killed 6 million in Germany. Uh, Stalin killed at least 20 million in Russia. And Mao killed at least 30 million in communist China. Ro has killed 56 million in the United States of America. What is Roe? I'm of course referring to Roe versus Wade, the tragic Supreme Court decision that determined that essentially an unborn child has no fundamental right to life, but instead a woman has a right to choose to terminate that life virtually for any reason whatsoever. How could it possibly be the case that this could be happening in America, that 56 million human beings could be killed despite being fully innocent and fully human. A lot of people say that they're on the fence on the issue of abortion. Uh, it's interesting, if you look at the uh, original case from 1973, Roe versus Wade, uh, the Supreme Court said that the question of a woman's right to choose is inextricably bound to the question of when life begins. So that basically means that if we don't know whether the unborn are human, then we really don't know the parameters of a woman's right to choose. And of course, we should never be supporting abortion if we're not sure whether the unborn is human. Uh, for example, imagine that I go on a hunting trip and I see something rustling in the bushes and I'm not really sure whether it's Bambi or whether it's my hunting partner. What should I do? Should I fire the shot or should I withhold my fire? Of course, I should do the latter. But you know something? We don't even have to worry about the prospect of ambiguity at all because the science of embryology is clear. As a matter of fact, there is complete consensus among the embryology textbooks that the unborn is a distinct, living, and whole human being actively involved in the process of developing itself from within from the very earliest stages of development. You know something Hadley Arcus uh, once said, a great professor up at Amherst College, said that an absence of consensus does not mean an absence of truth. For example, people once argued about the shape of the earth. They didn't know what the shape of the earth was, but that didn't mean that the earth didn't have a shape. Well, you know something? There is a truth out there, and we no longer have to worry about that lack of consensus. We know that the unborn is human. And if the unborn is human, we can't really be apathetic. At that point, I would say to someone who admits that the unborn is human, really isn't sure whether they want to weigh in on this debate, I would simply ask them, can they supply a philosophical reason for valuing the unborn less than you or me? And if they're unable to do that, then that really concludes the debate and we really have to get involved. You know something, in one of my favorite parables ever in the entire New Testament, uh, it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. There is a fundamental question that is asked there in that parable, who is my neighbor? And so the central question is, is the unborn human? In other words, is the unborn my neighbor? If so, we unquestionably have a moral obligation to come to their rescue. We are setting up the conditions of savage inequality. Every time we tried to say that someone was human, but not fully a person because they lacked some sort of a, an acquired accidental characteristic, we set up conditions of savage inequality. Hitler did it to the Jews. In America, we did it to the slaves. And we have to understand that in this country today, the abortion issue is the modern day equivalent of the slavery issue. But it is only an important moral issue for two reasons. Number one, the unborn is a distinct living and whole human being. And furthermore, philosophically, there is no difference between the adults we are today and the unborn children we once were that would have justified killing us at that earlier stage of development. All we need to do to resolve this issue is to focus our attention on the parable of the Good Samaritan and that fundamental question that's asked in that classic parable, 
who is my neighbor? If the unborn is human, the unborn is my neighbor. And I have a moral obligation to stop apologizing for defending them and to stand up for them because they cannot stand up for themselves.